Hello again, and welcome to the weekly Sunday School lesson from the Greenbrier Valley Church of the Nazarene, from the Na uh, Church of the Nazarene official publication, Faith Connection. We are continuing our study of the Ten Commandments, and today we are looking at the Fourth Commandment, which is Remember the Sabbath. But before we get into our scripture readings for today, let's open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we rejoice and glorify your name, and we thank you so much, Lord, for this perfect creation that you made in six days, and on the seventh day you rested. Lord, we just ask that you open up our hearts and minds to your word today. Let us take away from it what you know that we need and what you want us to learn of you through your word. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to use us in the way that you need us to be used to continue your kingdom to make disciples from the nations. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. We are again uh, looking at the fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath, and we have two scripture verses that we will be looking at today, and the first one is in, again, Exodus chapter 20, which contains the Ten Commandments, and today we will be looking at verses 8 through 11. So here is the word of the Lord. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Now we're going to continue our scripture readings today and we are going to the book of, or the gospel of Luke and we will be looking at Luke chapter 6 verses 1 through 11. And in my Bible, it starts out and it is titled, Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. And here is God's word from Luke chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and his disciples began to pick some heads of grain, rub them in his hands, and eat the kernels. Some of the Pharisees asked, Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God, and taking the consecrated bread, he ate what is lawful only for priests to eat. He also gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Saturday he went to the synagogue and was teaching, and a man was there whose right hand was shriveled. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew what they were thinking and said to the man with a shriveled hand, Get up and stand in front of everyone. So he got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it. He looked around at them all and then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He did so and his hand was completely restored. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were furious and began to discuss with one another what they might do to Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Now, our purpose today is understand the ways that we can make 
worship and rest a regular part of each week. Now, last week we examined the truth that we honor God's name not just by the words we use, but the way we live them. Today, we're going to examine how the Sabbath as a day should be set aside as different from the other days of the week. The Ten Commandments loom in the background of all our laws in Western society. Yet few of us question why there was actually two presentations of the commandments in Scripture. One was in Exodus 20 and then in Deuteronomy 5. Why two lists? Do they differ in any way? What does this mean for our understanding of the law? Well, let's look at Exodus, verses eight, chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. But to understand this, we must begin with the creation account. Genesis 2, verses 2 to 3 says, Thus the heavens and earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. God then called humankind to work in creation. That's in, excuse me, Genesis 2, chapter 5. Adam was told to take care of the garden, to take care of the animals and everything that was in there. God assigned him work. From the beginning, God created the rhythm of work and rest. By the time the fourth commandment was given on Mount Sinai, the Israelites were already practicing a day of work, or a day of rest, I'm sorry. This Sabbath commandment encompasses the idea of working hard, but then setting aside time for rest and worship of God. The Sabbath was God's gift to humanity, allowing us to cease from regular labors as God sees from the labor of creation and to celebrate the God who provides. The Israelites worked hard to provide for their needs, shelter, water, food, the list goes on. Unlike today, they could not run to the grocery store if they ran out of something they needed. A day of rest meant a day without work, a day without providing. So the people would need to have faith in God for his provision. The people were called to trust in the Creator, God's loving provision, rest and worship. Yahweh, worshiping Yahweh, thus making the day holy. And if you remember, as, they, as the Israelites went through the desert, they had to rely on God to provide for them, to feed them the manna from heaven. And water that was given to them from different sources throughout their travels. But now let's go look at Jesus and the Sabbath. And this is from the reading in Luke, chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. By the time of Jesus, the Sabbath had become a complex set of rules. For example, the distance a person was allowed to travel on the Sabbath was 2,000 paces, and that was about three-quarters of a mile. To travel further would be considered a sin. Sabbath had become more about focusing on not doing specific things than on resting and worshiping God. In this story in Luke, Jesus and his disciples were picking grain. One of the created Sabbath rules prohibited people from picking even a single stalk of grain and rubbing it with their hands to retrieve the kernels. This was considered harvesting. So when the Pharisees saw Jesus doing this, they called him out. Jesus responded by saying, The Son of Man is Lord 
of the Sabbath. On another occasion, Jesus healed a man on the Sabbath. This too, the Pharisees considered work. The Pharisees again called him out. Jesus responded by saying, I ask you, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? Now, how should we interpret it, Jesus' words and views of the Sabbath? First of all, Jesus observed the Sabbath. We read in Luke chapter 4, verse 16, that he went in the synagogue on the Sabbath as was his custom. Secondly, his intention was not to do away with the Sabbath, but change the concept of what the day should be. It was not intended to be bondage or a set of, or a set of rules, but a gift of God for our benefit. Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for man not man for the Sabbath. And that comes out of the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, verses 27 and 28. Third, Jesus was pointing out that Sabbath was not restrictive, but free. Freedom to rest from work. Freedom to worship God. Freedom to come together with other believers as the body of Christ and freedom to minister to the needs of others. The Pharisees had made Sabbath so constricting that they even saw helping others as evil. Jesus was pointing out that the focus of the Sabbath is not on us, what we do or not do, but on God, the object of our faith and worship. So, what does that mean about the Sabbath today? After Pentecost, believers started celebrating the Lord's Day. In Acts chapter 20, verse 7, Luke says, On the first day of the week we came together to break bread. Therefore, Sunday became the day of rest and worship for many believers. Today, millions gather on Sunday across the world to celebrate the Lord's Day, their Sabbath. In light of the fourth commandment and the life and words of Jesus, what should our perspective be on, on the Sabbath? If we make it about doing this and not doing that, we risk falling into the trap of legalism. A good place to, re, to begin is to remember the Lord's Day is for rest, worship, celebration, and ministry. If we begin there, we will have the proper perspective on what we should or should not be doing to fulfill the fourth commandment. Gerald Reed in his book, The Liberating Law, says, Jesus is Lord and he is risen. That was the motto of the early church. So each Sunday, believers came together to rejoice, just to be happy in the realization, the realization of who Jesus is, to enjoy the reality of his presence. More than anything else, Sunday should be a good time for us, for we know that in Jesus we have entered into eternal life. God's timeliness. There are good words to keep in mind as we gather to worship God on the Lord's Day. Now this came about because of the Sunday resurrection of Jesus. The church began to gather on that day of the week to worship and celebrate. The Jewish Christians, however, observed both the Sabbath and the Christian Lord's Day. Though the Gentiles believers didn't follow the Jesus the Jewish Sabbath observance, they did make Sunday their Sabbath. Now Sunday is typically viewed as a day of rest and worship. 
what if we also incorporated the practice of doing ministry in response to human needs such as visiting the sick and lonely, feeding the hungry, and helping the poor? Now, the first day of the week, Sunday, became the day of worship for early Christians. It celebrated the resurrection of Christ, which took place on this day. They called it the Lord's Day. Christians later began thinking of Sunday as the Christian Sabbath. Designed for the welfare of men and women, the proper use of the Sabbath is determined by the Son of Man. As a human figure, he best knows human needs. A divine figure, he had the authority to say how the Lord's Day should be used. Here's a little story. A dad and his family were on vacation a few decades ago and found themselves in need of gas. The good news is that there was a gas station not too far ahead on their journey. The bad news was it was Sunday. For most people, that may not have been an issue, but for this dad, it was a big deal. This man's observance of the Sabbath meant that their Sunday behaviors would not require work of another person. So now this dad found himself in a quandary. He run out of gas with his family in tow, or get gas and break his long-held Sabbath observance. What would you do? Think back, what, what Sabbath practices do you remember being important to, to your family in your youth? What about the larger cultures? You know, not even 30 years ago, it would be difficult to find a store open on Sunday. Now everybody's open. Everything is open. Do you have certain things that you do or won't do out of observance of the Sabbath? Now, again, going back to Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11, here are how our rest and work generally thought of in today's culture. Is one better than the other? What do we think of someone who works too much or too little? Or is someone who rests too much or too little? What is a proper perspective on work and rest beneficial. Now Exodus 20 verse 10 says that the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. This is a part of the commandment to keep the Sabbath day holy. Exodus wants us to understand that holiness happens in relation to God. What is the danger in thinking that holiness is separate from our relationship to God? In other words, you know, can we be holy on our own? That our own actions make us holy. That we can be holy individuals from, from relationship? I don't think so. Should we view our Sabbath practices connected to our relationship with God today? Well, of course we should. It's all about God. Why should we be intentional about our Sabbath observance because of our relationship to God? Not only is the fourth commandment rooted in the order of creation, but it also takes on new meaning as a result of the people's experience in Egypt. You know, a quick read of Exodus 5 will make it clear what life was like under Pharaoh. For Pharaoh, the gold of the economy was simply more, to the point of building storehouses to contain it all. All those under Pharaoh's thumb were impacted by this desire for more, including the supervisors, taskmasters, slaves, and even the land itself. Now, how does that experience help us rethink God's command to, to observe the Sabbath? How does observance of the Sabbath reshape the people's priorities? Think about this. 
in creation, God started on Sunday, okay? Created everything in six days and then rested. So the cycle that he established was work, rest. But once we started celebrating our Sabbath on Sunday, because that was the day of Jesus' resurrection, our week changed. We first rested, then work came out from that rest. When someone asks us how we're doing, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of times the, the typical reply is busy, just been so busy. It's safe to say that busyness has become an idol. Into that world, the Lord calls us to embody a different way of being so that our relationship with God and others are nourished and given new life. How does busyness affect our life? What would you say, or would you say, that most people find their worth and identity in what they do or what they can produce? If you don't have any intentional ways to observe Sabbath and participate in God's rest, what is one thing that you can do that will help you connect to God and others? We have to remember that we cannot be like the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. We cannot make our Sabbath a list of rules. A list of things to do or not to do. We need to make our Sabbath the focus on rest and worship with God. Because remember, true rest comes from God. And ultimately, our final rest will be eternal with God. Focus on the Sabbath as Exodus 20 calls us to. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, that you provide for us just as you provided everything that your people needed in the journey through the desert. You provide for us. And we remember, Lord, that on the sixth day, you told the people to gather double what they normally did during the week so that they could rest on one day. And while they rested, Lord, they partake in what you provided. They rested with you. Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. And we thank you, Lord, for your son Jesus, who shows us the way that you want us to live. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Have a wonderful